What is up, guys? This is Sash. This is Grant. And this is Indy BNB. Today we talk to a producer out of Atlanta, Georgia. He goes by the name A1 Devin. What's in the sauce, Devin? We find out that and much, much more uh, as we speak with our buddy Devin. So, Tash, uh, if you would do me a favor and uh, roll the motherfucking tape. All right, welcome into Indie B and B. Today we are joined by none other than A One Devin. Devin, how you doing today? I'm good, man. Glad to be here. We are glad to have you. Uh, Devin is one of our teammates from Mercer, my former locker mate. I've seen the guy mm-hmm. naked a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. Really excited to have him on. Uh, he he had a budding rap career, or a budding producing career in college, and it has grown uh, tremendously since he has graduated and moved into real life so excited to hear even more about it Devin I mean I want to get started with just a1 I mean are you a particular fan of steaks or or what's going on with the name brother oh man no that uh really it came from this rapper named Rocco who signed the artist future they used to always like before like the tag in their songs like a1 fbg and like that was like my favorite artist like when I really got into like you know making the decision what I wanted to listen to so between Future and Rocco those were my guys so I kind of stole that from them but I made a little play on it about the sauce thing so that was my tag what's in the sauce and it's kind of just been from from there yeah I got you yeah you know it's it's interesting I I love the 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 producer tag you know it's something that has kind of come a long way but you know Yours is awesome because it's it's a it's a kickback to to the nineties. It's to it's mm-hmm. to right to to Good Burger. I mean, is that one of your favorite movies? Is that why you chose that? Definitely, definitely is one of my favorite movies. And I just remember them talking about sauce a lot in that movie. I was when I first started, I was looking for a tag, and I just wanted something that would be different than somebody just like having a girl say their name or something, you know, something corny. So I just wanted to stand out immediately and have like a tag that was unique to me and. A1 and the sauce that came together perfectly. So, dude, nothing like it. Nothing like it. What is no. in the sauce? That's the real question. Shit, man. I can't tell you. It's top secret. Secret sauce. <laughs> it's top secret. You can't just give that away. Yeah, what do you think it is? I mean, it's yeah, his, that's, his, that's his competitive edge, baby. Right. <laughs> um, You know, so, you know, kind of getting into, you know, how did you get started? I mean, it's like, uh, it's people are some people have the misconception that you guys are just can you can just go and make beats you know I mean you must have some kind of musical you know background to just you know carry you forward I mean how did you get started in, in making beats and and you know get really inspired um I have older family members that were producers rappers different things of varying success and But the main reason is my older brother, Mike, he had been rapping since I can remember. And and I always remember just him booming in the other room. I'm like, what the hell is he doing in there? This music's so loud. He's listening to the same song over and over again. So he's definitely my main influence and the reason I even started doing it. Um, I started somewhat late actually doing the music thing because of football, you know, took up most of my time. So like I think what was that junior year of college I started uh, I started really looking into it like hey I would like to do this like long term and I spent one of my refund checks <laughs> all on music equipment I was like I, I'm you know $1,500 back then I was like oh shit I got some money I <laughs> so I just went all in at that time I was like if now or never so Gotcha. Where, um, I mean, like, what was the setup like in, in starting in college? I mean, is it, you know, are you, you, you cramped up in one of them lofts trying to figure out how to, you know, put all this stuff together? I mean, you get some noise complaints. Mm, yeah. My, my roommates definitely were like, okay, can you turn it down a little bit at night? But I just had some, some, the most basic speakers you could get. I bought a laptop specifically to make music on and a little keyboard. 
So that was just my original setup. It wasn't too much. I didn't really understand all the ins and outs of sound and all the different things, you know, you could use to make your sounds better, but I was just going for it. So I like that. Did you ever use any, like, any, like, you ever record natural sounds uh, or like anything like that to, to include or like it was just, just straight up like, all right, I'm going to get on the MIDI and just go to town. Back then it was just strictly MIDI. I've just recently gotten into just like recording the birds chirping outside, hitting a can, just different things just to give a more natural feel to something that's become more and more robotic, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. What would you say, like, you're, I mean, like, with, you know, how, from how far you've come, I mean, what's been the biggest, you know, progress you feel like from, you know, the time of the dorm room? Obviously, the equipment probably has changed to now, but, you know, what, like, you know, from, from the time you're starting to make beats to, to now, what is, what is the biggest, you know, difference in, you feel like, your game as far as just development? Probably really just getting into music theory and understanding, like, the history of music and why people do certain things and how to structure a song, things like that, you know, really help you launch path, your creativity. It gives you the, you know, the frame to uh, expand your creativity. If you just know where it all comes from. Interesting. Would you, what have you started to do uh, with that, like kind of music creativity, like or musical theory? Have you like taken classes? Is that something you've just kind of, got a book from or would you would you start doing to educate yourself lots and lots of youtube just <laughs> painstakingly going clicking through a bunch of youtube videos trying to figure out how to play some piano um last year i took like 10 piano classes just to just pick up some knowledge on like the basics of keys because it really helps with sampling really anything i'm doing putting the mute putting songs together it's it's huge just to understand music theory interesting what like I, I you know you mentioned sampling and like that's something that I am a particular fan of. I, I think you know before we when I was when reaching out to you about this, you know I heard you sample a little Billy Billy Eyelash, as I like yeah, to call yeah. her. But uh, you know what are some of the you know things that go into you know when you hear something, how do you know it's like hey I could sample that or like hey like that may work here. You know I know it's kind of hard to like probably describe the creativeness, but like you know what 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 makes a good sample. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to go about it. Um, I typically like to sample um, open parts in songs so where it's just like a melody going. Um, and that Billy Eilish song was, you know, no drums were going off. I was like, yeah, this is perfect. Like, I love this, this melody. It just, it spoke to me. So I just went with it. Um, but you could also use drones from a song, anything or, you know, sampling is such a big uh, concept, you know, it's endless. Interesting. You know, whenever I think about, you know, sampling, I always think about, you know, through the fire is what, you know, Kanye sampled on through, your, through the wire. I always think about high, it seems like high pitch samples to me are the ones that for me make a, you know, make an impact on me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know what, what, what that is, what that says about me, but <laughs> you know. yeah something recognizable you know the lyric is in there and it's just like somebody singing high pitch i don't know I, I feel you on that though for sure like that's definitely a big thing like what is like um you know have you we have, we talked with uh, a band called high crime and and mitch one of their their uh i believe he's a, he's a guitarist right yeah, um, yeah mitch goes and he'll sample um he sampled out some kind of old tapes from a church sermon he like went and took like somebody's like old church sermon and like it was them what were they do Tash, what were they doing i can't remember like he was like i can't even remember where he was working but somehow he ended up in a church and found this like box of just like old tapes and he just started like listening to them and i guess he just was like this sounds cool and so it's like a weird like instrumental bridge and it's way in the background but you just hear this like random man like talking you can't really hear what he's saying so we asked him he's like yeah it's some like sermon from like 1987 that this guy gave and i just like put it in there wow. no credits because he had no clue who it was he just found it yeah that's the great thing about sampling you can just you can pull from anything and the way technology is advanced you can manipulate this sound to do anything you want it to do so it's so open that's that's pretty cool though 
where do you uh do you do you seek out a sample like you go and like are you given like all right hey today i'm gonna listen to like i'm gonna go buy a box of old records and and go through those or like how do you how do you determine i guess um i'm not super super big on on sampling uh other people's records uh but when i do when i'm just listening to music for inspiration sometimes it just hits me and it's like oh no i need to sample this like this would be a perfect part for me to 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 pull from to make something cool so it, it kind of just happens naturally i don't like to just uh sit and click specifically for samples you know gotcha yeah hey, well, so when you go in and make so I'll, i've been asking a lot of people this just because of the you know since we're in the 21st century and there's so many people are making music whether it's you know completely electronic or even still using guitars and pianos but it's all going through the computer you know when you're on a i don't know if you use like logic or garage band or whatever the hell you use but what do you do to like rein yourself in because you can sit there for forever trying to find the perfect sound what what do you do to like go in and say okay i gotta stop like this is the sound that is tough that is tough but i don't know it's really just a feeling a lot of the stuff i do is just about a feeling like trying to catch that feeling and then especially especially with hip-hop music if you producing with someone in the room it's just like catching that moment you know it happens quick so you just got to keep your ear ears open and just shut it off and be like no this is it and then maybe you can search a little more later but you know when you find the, the right one for sure because you could sit there i mean for the rest of your life and be right tinkering, you know little things here and there i said uh, so when like do you make more music when people come into your studio or do you have stuff already made and people come in and kind of piece it together I do a little bit of both. I think I prefer to, I think my best work comes from when I'm working alone and I have the time to to mess around a little bit and try to find something creative out of it. But a lot of times you don't really have that much time when people are rapping. As soon as they hear a melody, they're, they're already writing. And so you got to get that thing finished, put the drums on there, get it out of there. So a min more minimalist approach comes out when somebody else is in, in the room. So Yeah, I, was, I remember seeing a, video a long time ago uh jay-z going into timbaland's studio when he was making the black album mm -hmm. and you know they, they say jay-z keeps like 60 70 songs written in his head just the lyrics mm -hmm. and timbaland was playing just like showing him some beats and he played the beat that ended up being dirt off your shoulder but timbaland like skipped over and jay-z was like no nah, nah, go back go back go back and mm -hmm. he, like, it hit him so how do you help when someone does that like can you help people? Do they give you lyric ideas and you say, oh, this will go with this beat? Or is it sort of the other way around? Like they'll come in and say, oh, that beat sounds like it would fit this this lyric idea I have. Um, more times than not, it kind of happens in the moment, just like they hear it and they're inspired by something. And I kind of take a step back there. That's not really my strong suit right now is writing as a producer. Uh, but I, you know, I, I could throw them lines every now and then, but I kind of let them just do their thing and and let me master the production and, and the engineering portion of it and just let them, you know, be creative, just go in. Cause that's when something special really happens. I, I you gotta be very careful about like, you know, interrupting the flow of somebody's creativity. So that's that's a big thing in the studio with me. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a it's a weird thing. It's it's weird. Like it's, this is such a different conversation for us. Most people we're talking to are creating the full song, you know, lyrics and everything. So it's it's a different uh, kind of different cat we're putting on tonight. Talking to you with being more of a producer side of it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and we're we're glad to put that cap on because you know we love to be you know with with all the music that's out there. I mean, there's indie artists that are you know, producers, they're, you know, they're rappers, they're people any, you know, anywhere. Um, you know, I think that one of the guys that, you know, the closest guy we've interviewed to you is this guy named Ed Washington out of uh, Alaska. He's got a very Frank Ocean, um, kind of that kind of vibe where he's really, uh, but he is, he's a full circle guy. He writes, he sings, and he, and he does the, all of the production. He's got his own studio in his, uh, in his house in, in Alaska. And he, uh, does a lot of mastering and voice lessons and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, it's interesting that he, he, one of the things he said was like, Hey, like becoming like that five, I, I, I like that to the baseball terms, like a five tool player, you know, somebody mm -hmm. who's able to like do it all 
Um, that's interesting that you're right. You, you know, have you gotten in the booth? I mean, is there, is there recordings out there of you, you know, getting in the booth and, and, and uh, having some lines? I mean, do you have some? There's definitely some recordings of me that the world will never hear. You know, <laughs> I heard my voice a couple of times on the track. I was like, you know what? Let me just let me just stay in my lane with this one. Like, you know, I just really like I like my brain doesn't even work in that capacity right now. So if somebody starts the idea, I can help finish it. But like as far as like coming with a whole song from top to bottom, that's tough. That's really tough for me. So yeah. Who's the, who's the biggest, like, you know, is your brother like, Hey man, why don't you get on this track? Why don't you just come on? Why don't you come on? Or is like, is it, is it, is it like other guys you work with? Like, is there people who, who are really trying to juice you into getting into the booth? I mean, I feel like it comes up like every other session. It's like, Oh no, jump in there. Uh, once you start suggesting ideas, they're like, Oh no, you should jump in there. I'm like, nah, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, bro. I'm yeah. good, bro. <laughs> well, I want to get into some of the, you know, some of the tunes, uh, because, you know, we, we can start, you know, at VVS too. Um, but that's the only one, you know, it's on this, that, that one's on Spotify, but, you know, tell me about, you know, just the beginning, I guess you and your brother working together. I mean, is this something that like has been going on, you know, did, did he just say, Hey man, like learn this. And then, you know, we, you can start you know, making me beats or did he was like, was he like, Hey, you gotta go, you know, grind it out and, and learn your craft a little bit before you start working. Cause I mean, obviously he's, you know, he's a, you know, he's famous you know he, he was on atlanta uh i mean his his song um uh is that higher ground higher ground was in the strip club scene above, in, ground, yeah. above ground that's right mm -hmm. yeah it is in the strip club scene in atlanta so i mean like you know he's he's a he's well known and I'm, I'm sure that he was probably like you know what was his advice to you when you were first starting out and then you know how did you you know feel like get to the, get that level where you were gonna you know work with him yeah it was a uh it was a, it was a process for sure because he was like supported me from the jump and but he had been making music so long like he was had been writing for people in Atlanta for so long and so he had just a higher taste in music so I felt like I just need to work as hard as I could to get to that point and then present him with with something to work with so like he's always been supportive but I knew from from the jump that I was like okay this needs to be a certain level of quality for him to ever <laughs> even yeah. attempt to rap on it so. Gotcha. And with VVS, I mean, you know, first thing, I mean, I, I went out and, and I, I got the album. But I mean, you know, tell me about having my way. I mean, that song was my favorite of the uh, on the whole album uh, or on the whole. I guess this is, is an EP. It's an EP. EP yeah. um, but like, man, I freaking love that song. I mean, tell me about, you know, getting into that and, and the, the creative process and creating that song. Well, the entire project, I think, was done in like three days honestly like wow just like we just locked in and he was like yeah we're gonna make something and you, you're gonna put it out with your name on it like like an artist <laughs> like <laughs> i was like oh shit okay <laughs> let's go this is what i've been waiting for so that was just one of the one like that was just one of the ones we came up with and i think i had made that beat on my own one day and then he heard it and was like oh my god you got so much better at this <laughs> like <laughs> Like, what the hell? I don't know. It was just some, it was euphoric. It happened so quickly. Like, it was just, it just came together so easily and perfect. I just knew it was, it was right. And it actually ended up getting placed on another TV show called Boomerang on BET. So that was, that was pretty cool too. Awesome. Awesome. That's sick. I, I've not, I've not seen the program, but <laughs> yeah. I'll check it out. I don't know. I don't know the quality of the TV, but <laughs> it was. <laughs> We did get paid and it was on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, man. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, you know, with the with with this, I mean, obviously, some you kind of you kind of get into, you know, from my understanding, and I think you're going to explain it much better than I am. But like, people contact you or you contact people and say, "Hey, I got beats for you," and you know, this is how I, I figured it out on on Little Dicky. I don't on Little Dicky show, Dave. It seems like that that guy sends beats to people, and then if he if they like the beats, they buy them, and and they're able to rap on them. What is the real process in not Hollywood bullshit? Like, how do you how does your uh, you know, your plan work as far as I'm a rapper, Devin, you're a producer. How do we get together, and how does that whole thing work? Well, that is a legit process that that they showed there. That is some people choose to go that route. You know, I personally like to go with a more personal route. Like I want to know the person. I want to sit in with the person. I want to get to understand what they're trying to do musically. 
more than anything. So a lot of a lot of times it's just I meet people through other people and music and it's just like we vibe. Let's 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 keep making music. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep getting better at it. So I just go for it through a more personal route. But you can also do the sending beats out thing, but it's it's half as effective as getting to know the person and creating that, you know, relationship. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think that that's that's a good process. Um, you know, my my uh, the way we have kind of started this thing. You know, we we just you know we slide in DMs. We we get referrals from other people, um, and and that seems like the community of music is like, hey, like this so and so you know said you guys you know were awesome. We're checking you out now. You know, would you want to come on the pod? So like I you know it's kind of just building through personal relationships. I think in anything is is definitely the way to go. Um, you know, who are some of the, I guess not, you can't just choose favorites, but I mean, you know, can you give us some, you know, some good stories from the studio as far as just like, hey, like there was a moment when you were, you, you, you found the right, you know, you, you were talking about that kind of like Eureka moment earlier. Um, you know, what's the best one you've, you've, you've been a part of and, and like where you just were like, hey, we're vibing today. Like, let's freaking go. Hmm. That's tough. That's tough. That's been a lot of moments. That's been a lot of, <laughs> a lot of songs that have been recorded. Uh, I, w- I would say Above Ground was definitely one of those moments. Like, in yeah. that was like when I first started making beats. So that was like one of the first like 20 beats that ever were made. Like me and my brother hammered it out. On wow. my, I came home for like Christmas break and we were at our, at our mom's house on the floor in my room. I had no furniture in there. <laughs> just trying to make beats. And he was like, oh, shit, this is kind of cool. Hold on. <laughs> He's like, let me try to write something to this. Uh, and it just came together so perfectly. But um, yeah, but it was right on the floor. I had all stock instruments. Neither one of us really knew what we were doing as far as like making the beat and everything. But it definitely was a moment. Gotcha. gotcha. Have you ever had two artists like fight over a beat? Like, some, like two people hear it and they're like, I want it. I want it, and you have to be like, I don't know what to do here. Uh, I mean, often they don't even know that, like, oh, somebody else cut a record already, or, you know, because you got to, as a producer, it's tough, because you never know. Like, somebody records a song, and they're like, oh, I love it, and the artist the next day will be like, eh, fuck that song. I'm never, <laughs> it's never coming out. So you got to keep you got to keep working your records if you believe in a, a certain beat or something like that. So it's, not, it's no, never really any fighting over beats because do, do you have a backup plan for if there is like an arm wrestling match or something <laughs> <laughs> do that. whoever makes the hit whoever makes the hit <laughs> gets to claim the right whoever gets more streams dude yeah. whoever's got the hottest girlfriend dude that's who's getting the <laughs> who's getting the beat <laughs> right. who brings some who brings the right he brings the right people to the studio who's got the coolest coolest vibe um I mean, and, and, you know, I want to get into, you know, it looks like you have VVS, but you don't have VVS two, you have VVS, VVS, and then you have VVS three. So yes. is there a sequel in there somewhere, or is this just like a one, three, five kind of scenario or there, there's an original V it was just VS. It's what only on SoundCloud, super rare. It's, oh man. Uh, it's a uh, trash in comparison to the other two projects. <laughs> it was another one of those early things I was doing. My brother just gave me a shot. He hopped on some stuff. So it was a little three song top secret uh, project on SoundCloud. All right, so, special. And VVS is the sequel. So NDB and B exclusive. If you can go dig around and find <laughs> VS <laughs> on, on, uh, on SoundCloud, you will be uh, you'll win the prize, which yeah. is uh, getting to hear Devin's uh, first project. So that's mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess you know with with a few of your other songs. I mean, you know, needs and wants, frequency. I mean, frequency's got you you know your most streams on Spotify. I mean, what you know, what do you think it is about those songs that that resonates with people, and and what do you what resonates with them? You know, with you, uh, and what makes you you know want to bump them in your car. Uh, I think they're just super relatable, you know. I think it's something that, you know, it's a great vibe, you know. It's just something people can attach to. It's easy to listen to, you know. It's not like my most, like, experimental work, but, like, it's just, like, an easy listen. So, yeah. it could just take off like that. So, 
No. Gotcha. Why did you? Uh, I mean, was was the knees and wants video actually filmed in Cancun? I mean, did you go? And why weren't you? I was not in Cancun? Mike was on vacation. He was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna shoot a video out here." He got a little quick setup and just shot shot a video. So it was like spur of the moment, like just do it. You didn't get to go. I mean, why aren't you? Why aren't you in there? Like, you know, on the back, you know, background. I mean, like you can easily like big brother, little brother move. Like, yeah, man. While while you're not here. I'm going to make an awesome video and you're not going to be in it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel like you guys should have been like back to back going into the pool or like, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like it, it would happen. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still a behind the scenes guy for, for the most part, uh, part. I like the, I like the artists do that thing, man. I'm, I'm not really a big, uh, all in the camera, you know, show it off. You know, that's not really me. I'm, a, I'm, I'm laid back. I'm out the way. I'll make some, I'll make some video appearances soon though. I'm gonna I'm I'm pop out. All right, all right. Well, the next thing I want to get to is, you know, uh, I, I've seen that Zaytoven and, and other producers have live shows or, you know, do live sets. You know, I know you and I once joked, we were in the locker room and you had just kind of started this thing and was like, Dev, I mean, like, what are you doing? You, I mean, you can make the beats, that's good. Like, but you should have a side project as like, you know, some kind of mascot headed like DJ and like just tour the country and just, <laughs> freaking rake it in um you know tell me about the live music you know what as as it returns you know is there a plan for you to to go and tour with with mike and or like you know what is the what does that look like from the producer side i definitely still want to get into djing it just hasn't came up yet especially with the pandemic that definitely took a break but i'm definitely going to get into djing so at least i could do my own sets of like i'm just going to place my stuff straight but uh, once I pick up my piano skills too, I might do some live little piano for somebody. That that would be fine. Ooh, my I piano. like that. Yeah. Like, so. And as far as the mascot head, I mean, I know we we talked about like a like a mouse or not a mouse. We, we we were like riffing off a dead mouse. I mean, I thought we came up with like a moose of, moose head of some kind. I mean, look, I think that it could be huge. I don't know. I need you in uh, a bear costume. <laughs> losing it, losing it. Just going Great crazy. Go be the bear. <laughs> yeah, go be the bear, man. <laughs> or I could be in a cow costume, and you, I mean, you could be like, you could be dressed up as like the A1 sauce. You could have like a sauce costume, and I'll be like the cow, and we'll be like fighting because like you're trying to, you know, get people to eat me. I don't know. We'll get think about it. Um, Tash and I have a really, really bad project called, uh, uh, we, we always talk about band names and like your, your name is, you know, it makes, you know, it makes sense and people, you know, it's, it's memorable, it's easy and it's, you know, it's really good. Uh, but I have a really bad list of band names. Uh, Duck Truck is the leader of the clubhouse though. It's like maybe the worst band name of all time. Um, and uh, Tash and I are trying, we're developing that project right now, but um, you know, maybe, maybe you wear a truck costume. I wear a duck costume and you know, we become, it's, it's like a chain smokers vibe. I don't know. We'll see. Isn't that, isn't that like kind of the purpose of band names? It's supposed to be a little off. Like what the fuck is that? You need it. Go run with it. Go for it. Yeah, we're working on Duck Truck, but uh, all right. So DJ sets. I mean, what would that? That would be just you playing straight up your beats and is your all your your catalog. And then you know, are you mixing in the top forty there, or is it just straight up you? Yeah, I I probably just do my own music because you know honestly, I I could get into some weird music. Like I I feel like everybody like what is this dude doing up there? So. Uh, I don't think I don't know if DJ would be my uh, go to just like a regular DJ. <laughs> yeah. It just had to be a set DJ like gotcha. play my music get out. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. And then like, you, would you be able to play? I, I know I've seen Big Crit play, and I think you were there. You you yeah, you we went show, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know that DJ he has. He, he's from here. Um, God, I can't remember his name. Um, but like that guy does his own DJ sets, but he also DJs for big crit. You know, mm -hmm. is that something you would do for, for Mike? If you, if you got the opportunity, I mean, DJing yeah. behind him or. Definitely. Definitely. I do that. Without a doubt. That's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. the, the brothers tour. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Kenny Chesney's got the brothers of the sun tour. You guys could be like the brothers of like, I don't know, like Cancun mm -hmm. the brothers of Gwinnett. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. 
Um, well, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that we get, I, I, I've never thought of, you know, we, we, we talked to so many bands and everyone's like, Oh, I can't wait for live music. Can't wait for live music. But you know, you're more in the, Hey, like I've been, I've been working during the pandemic and I, I, I'm, you know, that the, the sets are going to be, they're going to come, but mm. you know, I'm mainly focused on the studio. Talk to me about the studio time. Like, you know, your, you know, how does that work? Are you, are you in like a specific studio? Do you have a studio at home? Like, what does that look like for you? I have a, home studio and i also have a studio that's currently in roswell um it's set up um people can come record whenever you know just book a time with me so um and i also do a little mobile studio set up too so i'm a, I'm a whole traveling band <laughs> if, if if need be if the money calls <laughs> gotcha that's awesome what's uh i mean what do you, what do you, I guess I'm trying to, uh, what do you allow in your studio? I mean, are you, are you free flowing? I mean, I've seen studio scenes where, you know, we're, we're lighting up the ganja all day. I mean, what are we, what are we thinking here? And I mean, it just depends on. I'm cool. You're with at. It. Yeah. It depends on where I'm at. I'm cool with it, but my studio is a, a work zone, work only. <laughs> so I like that, you know, you can step outside and handle your business, but this is, this is work mode within here. Anywhere else, you know, that's pretty much standard. I'm I'm expecting that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I I, I always am interested because, like, I mean, you 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 were talking on the other day, like, just hey, you know, I, I'm there. Uh, it's it's your time. You know, I'm trying to make sure you maximize your time. Um, mm -hmm. and that's interesting. How how hard is it to keep? You know, I'm sure the creatives get. You know, they start getting off into you know things. But how hard is it to kind of guide them back on on the track to get you know get things out? It's like being a coach, man. I'm like, that's really what it's, it's turned into. I'm like, coach, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get my, my people in the right position to, you know, stay focused and, and get something done. Cause it could easily turn into just like, oh, smoking and just hanging out, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh shit, we used all our studio time. I'm like, you know, so. Got it. Well, who is somebody you would want to see in that studio? I mean, like somebody that you just, you know, Obviously, you mentioned Rocco and, and Future. I mean, are those two people, that, are the, those the two that you would want to, you know, work with the most? I mean, are there, is there any up-and-comers that you feel like would be uh, a, a dream to work with? Um, I would love to work with, this is not an up-and-comer, but Andre 3000 is definitely a huge influence on stuff, just how weird he was at, at a time like that. It was super inspirational. Um, there's an artist around Atlanta named Key. Uh, he's a big influence on uh, the music I create as well. So those are just the two, like, including Rocco, Future, Gucci Mane. You know, these are these are my, that's my, you know, my sources of inspiration, that's for sure. Awesome, awesome. I like as you keep it, you know, inside the perimeter. You're all about Atlanta. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big hometown guy. It's the only way Atlanta hats. Like, it's... It's a Hawks hat, man, you know? Yes, sir. Go Hawks. They're playing right now. Uh, They're up, too. Yes, sir. We gotta get that playoff spot. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big hometown guy for sure, though. Awesome. Dang, man. Well, I mean, what's uh, you know, what's cooking for you? I mean, what's next as far as you know, music coming out? I mean, are, are, what can we expect summertime? You know, is there anything you know in the works? I should have two projects dropping this summer. One with um, one of the artists I work with a lot, Dalen Gideon's, uh, called "For My Dogs Too." We did the original one in like 2019. So that's coming this summer. Also another person I collaborate with a lot is uh, 404 Gianni. His project should be coming out this summer if I can, you know, I could coach him to get it, get his mind right so we can get it dropped in time. Uh, so those are the two big things on my plate. And then later this year, I'm gonna be working on a, a compilation, just bringing everything together and just really locking in my sound. So everybody knows like what I'm going to, be on going forward i like that i like that you call it like the, the the sauce pack or the uh what's that thing that you can get the ketchup mustard and relish in um god i don't know sauce package i don't know we'll think about it you can think about it mm -hmm. i'm not gonna think about it i think you, you probably got it <laughs> yes yeah we got some <laughs> um well that's awesome man i think you know 
you got a lot, a lot cooking and, and I'm, we're, you know, obviously we're, we're proud of you, you know, glad to, glad to see you, you know, getting your, getting your grind on, getting your shine on with, uh, with this, sure. you know, it's, it's definitely a grind and you're a grinder. So we know, we know all about your work ethic and nothing needs to be said there, but I think with that, I think we're going to get into, you know, Pete Peterson's party pack of questions, 20 questions, rapid fire. All right. And, uh, Devin, it's gonna be, it's gonna be quick. So just get ready. We're at a pre a pre question because this is a big one. Who do you think would be a better rapper to work with, me or Grant? I'm definitely going with Tash. Easy, Tash, easy. Yes. Easy. Yes. What do you mean? Easy. You're a maniac, Grant. Okay. <laughs> dude, I could. I mean, I appreciate the screaming, grimy sound. I mean, I can come in there, dude. I got so many voices. Party decided. Let's we'll start the party pack. God damn, that's tough. <laughs> that one's tough to swallow. Devin, I am available if you need any voiceover activity. We can go one man to rule them all, and or we can go like, what's in the sauce? I mean, I don't know, man. Why are you playing? No, I might have to get you to do like some kind of like outro or intro for my project. <laughs> Seriously, hey, you I'm, be- hey, I'm available. You let me know. You got my number. I I, I come in the studio. I'll be in there, and uh, we're gonna work. All right, I'm I'm there to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can ask those guys at Clemson. I got uh, I got some voice over acting. I get some voice over work there. All right, party pack. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Here we go. Start it off. Cake or pie? Cake. Okay. Aliens? Are they real or not? <laughs> Absolutely. Is Bigfoot real? He used to be real. Okay, he died. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is, love first, is love at first sight real? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Donuts or toaster strudels? Donuts. Chips or pretzels? This one's really, really important because this is actually the most controversial question we ask. It's, it's, it's by far chips. Pretzels are trash. That's like, I got to be in a bad spot to get open up a bag of pretzels <laughs> all right so it's you it's lowen it's like i mean brother moses uh, awesome. everybody although brother moses that likes some pretzels but i mean every fucking person hates ch- hates pretzels you and like, lowen could like run for president vice president against pretzels and yeah like, oh, yeah <laughs> i've got to be in a low place to be eating a pretzel what <laughs> of the year dude i, I Hey, you should re- you should reach out to Lowen and tell her, hey, yo, chips over pretzels, and just and just leave it at that. Um, anyway, dogs or cats? Dogs. Would you rather be a ninja or a pirate? A ninja. Chicken tenders or chicken wings? <sighs> Controversial. I like I like tenders. I'm gonna go tenders. I like He's going tenders. All right, if you did get wings, are you a ranch or a blue cheese guy? Ranch, all the way. All right. Do you rather have a night in or a night out? Homebody. I'm a producer. I'm in the house. Okay. He's in the house. I like it. So you work until sunrise or sunset? What would you rather see? I'd rather see the sunrise, for sure. I'm a morning person. I get like it. that. I like that. Have seen Devin at 5.30 in the morning. He yeah. is excitable. Mm-hmm. Aren't you a red wine guy or a white wine guy? White wine. But it's a mood. I like both. I like to drink. So, okay. I'm not for both. All right. Watch out. Devin Davison, complete alcoholic. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Who's a better dancer? Me or Tash? I don't think I've ever seen Tash dance, so I'm going to go with Greg on this one. Let's go. I'll give him that one. <laughs> Are you wearing pants or you're wearing shorts? Shorts. What would you rather wear? Pants. Pants. He's a pants guy. Do you believe in magic? <laughs> yeah. That's it's, magic. A, it's a simple question. Do you believe yeah, in fucking yeah. fairy tales and wizards? All right. Like, yeah. <laughs> God damn. Other people took that as like, oh, do you believe in like magic, like a like you know, the magic of song? And we were like, I was like, ah, man, I was like thinking the other way, but whatever. <laughs> um, all right, would you rather go to a club or a bar? 
Neither. I really think I was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. What are you doing at a party? Are you more likely to do the electric slide or the worm if you had to choose one of them? The electric slide. I feel like you're a worm guy, though. For sure. I, I can't do the worm, actually. I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. I may be able to. I feel like I've seen you try it before. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Devin, would you eat an orange peanut? No. The circus peanuts? You don't like this? No, that's trash. What Not a eat? fan. That's like <laughs> candy from the 50s. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, some people really like them. Uh, there might be a, a crew of people that really do. You. <laughs> yeah, me. Uh, and finally, the final question of every Pete Peterson's party pack of questions. Bands or artists that we might not know that we should be checking out uh, and you can put on anybody within... 285 outside of 285 or um you know a band maybe that is off the wall that we might not know about uh i'm a big homer so i'm gonna give you some people from atlanta all right uh these you can get pretty strange here uh i would check out this artist named bear one boss one word completely insane trap music but it's just like Dude's a rock star for sure. He's insane. Bear, like B E R R. Bear, B- like a bear, like like, an animal. like bear down. Okay, bear one boss. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Who else you got for me? I check out uh, Tony Snow. Tony Snow, with a with an H in there. He's a uh, oh. He's a he's a trap rapper, but he does like he raps on like <laughs> smooth jazz beats with like sh- shitty eight oh eight. Like so, it's like. It's a definitely a listening experience. I think you guys might enjoy it because <laughs> you'll just be like, "What the hell is this?" But it's 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 pretty cool. All uh, right, all right. And then there's another artist. He's more lyrical. His name is uh, Kenny Mason, and he's he's from like the East Side, I think. But he's 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 got a buzz going right now. That's pretty big. I think you guys will like him. He has uh-huh. some uh, rock elements to his music too. He does rock music as well. So. All right. All right, so I got Bear One Boss, uh, Tony Schnow. Is it a C-H or an S? It's just S-H-N-O-W? Yeah, I think so. It might be two H's, but I don't know. I can't can't call it. All right, and uh, are these uh, all SoundCloud or are these guys on the Spotify? You can find them on Spotify. We can find them on Spotify. Let's go. All right. Devin, we're going to tell them that you sent us and uh that when we feature them on our page that you're gonna we're gonna say hey look shout out to devin for a1 devin for uh you know hooking us up so yeah, yeah. Uh, hey thank you so much devin for coming on our podcast um uh, i think we, it has been a joy it's been very you know educational as far as just you know getting something new out there for for uh you know a new type of music that we you know is not traditional to this podcast so um glad we could have you on i think that you know is you are a, a rocket ship and that we're glad to be able to uh we're glad to be able to, to to you know be a part of the ride man so you know excited to see what you come out with next excited for your two projects for my dogs two and uh 404 i screwed up the guy's name i can't read what i wrote gianni gianni 404 gianni uh this this summer uh, look for Devin to be in a mascot outfit uh, at some point coming to a stadium near you uh, to play a very, very loud DJ set. Um, and, uh, you know, I I'm believe. BS on SoundCloud. First one that finds yes. it gets a free shirt from Grant. Hey. Yeah, one of my uh, one of my shirts. Speaking of shirts, before we get off, Devin, uh, are we going to ever bring back one, the A1 shirts or two? uh you know the the fresco the fresco gear is that uh is that in the works it's all in the works uh i'm definitely gonna have some merch coming out this summer what size you wear because i know you'd be with the 2x guy 2x guy some yeah, nice yeah. some nice screen print stuff for you it's gonna hold up forever Ooh. and with in the, in the fall we're gonna have some fresco suits and different items for the colder months so it's coming it's on the way Hey, I'm looking for that fresco. I, I, I did not get to get the fresco track uh, or the the joggers and uh, the um, 
jacket with it. I, I was very upset that, that was sold out by the time I had uh, had scrambled up there. So, um, mm. but hey, I'm glad to glad to see that you you know we're you're crushing it and uh, you know you're a friend of the pod. So anytime you want to come on or, you know, we'll, we'll check back in with you in a few months, you know, maybe before your, your, your projects dropping, uh, just hit us up. We'll definitely, uh, we'll have you on for, for just some promo and some juice. Uh, sure. you know, we're all about that. We're all about, you know, basically helping, uh, independent artists as much as we can, uh, on this podcast. So. Yeah. I appreciate you guys for having me. It's, what y'all doing is really dope, man. Yeah, Can't yeah. lie. Appreciate you. Yeah. Today. One. All right. Yeah. That is A1 Devin. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening.